Okay, good evening and welcome to Petaluma Community Access Board of Directors meeting for Tuesday, April 18, 2017. Um, who's going to act as the secretary tonight? It will Sorry, be John. I've been drafted. Our secretary, Paul Strobeck, is absent tonight. So, John, will you call the roll, please? Okay, Cindy Thomas. Here. Paul Strobeck, absent. Domenica Giovannini. Here. Richard Alpert. Here. Dennis Murphy. Here. Tim Williamson. Here. And myself, John, is here. Okay, so we have a quorum. Okay, so um, we have nobody here for public comments, so we can move on to the Board of Directors' comments and announcements, if there are any. I am going to be speaking on the 28th at the, what is it, We Are the Future conference at SRJC. Anyone's available on media literacy. That was about the 28th? 28th, yeah. The time. I, I haven't heard the specifics yet. <laughs> so I'm hoping those come soon. Um, but the conference, I think, is from 8.30ish to 4ish. And I can send out the... That's the Petaluma campus? Petaluma campus, yeah. But I don't have any further details. I'm sure it'll be online. Come closer date. I on the know. banner on the front. Now, oh. tonight only, Dominica. Hopefully <laughs> soon. Soon. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? All right. Um, everybody has an agenda. Yes, and uh, I'm sure you all looked it over. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if there are no mm -hmm. changes, modifications, uh, can we get a motion to approve it? So moved. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. Anyone opposed? Did you get that, John? Okay. Did you get everybody's name? I got Richard second and Tim motion. Motion. Tim motion and Dennis second. Oh, Dennis, I didn't get that. Yeah, it was so quiet. That's why I asked if you got that. It was actually. It was a trick question. Was, it was Richard. Oh, it was Richard? Yeah. Oh, it was quiet it was Richard. Really a trick question. Not quiet Dennis, it was quiet Richard. Okay, that's it. Approved. All right. Okay, so uh, Treasurer's Report. Do you have anything for us, Dominica? There's a copy of the minutes. Oh, 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 I forgot the minutes. Yes, the minutes for the March 28th, 2017 meeting. Oh, I think Tim made, somebody made a correction. I wasn't here. Tim so. made a correction. Okay. Um, so if there are no other changes. Oh, I just caught an error. You did? I think there's a typo. Pardon? There's a typo. Oh, I didn't catch the typo, but. Um, if we had Dominica and Mark were absent, and we couldn't possibly have had six O on the votes. <laughs> so we had uh, one, two, three, four, five O. Okay. That's better. Good catch. It helps to be having just written five O and counted everybody. Okay, so with the corrections, um, are we ready to approve the minutes? Yep. What was my correction again, John? Oh, you had um, you made the distinction between policies and procedures. And Paul and Rob oh. are working on the procedures for the radio. And it had written policies. Paul had yeah. policies and okay. procedures. So we just separated those two. I'll move the uh, minutes as corrected. Second. Okay, all those in favor, aye. 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 I have to not be uh, And uh, Dominica abstains. Yeah. Ooh. I noticed on the agenda just now that Mark is still listed on the um, committees, but that's just window dressing. Oh. <coughs> Quit motioning that to approve things if we have all these mistakes. Well, has there been a possible Wait. resignation though? So we yeah, we did get the resignation yeah. last oh. month. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. Okay. I will know that. That would have some considerable here. discussion over whether we had to accept it or not. Just because Tim couldn't find anything else to argue about. So, <laughs> no, I did. I found something later. <laughs> That'd be it. Yeah, you did have something later. Yeah, I fixed it, it too. You were, yeah, you were very much on task. All right, so uh, now we can do the treasurer's report. Despite here. Okay. Ready? 
So I'm actually gonna turf it off to John because I we talked about this earlier and I think that he has the main commentary for the treasurer's report. Um, well, let's see, the treasurer's report. We're still doing quite well. <laughs> um, Until next month. <laughs> when, the, when, the break, when all the bills come in. All the bills come in. Um, the, real, the real thing about the, um, the fiduciary uh, performance of PCA at the moment is uh, working with Stephanie, who's getting her feet wet, learning how we work. Um, she's also in a transitional mode herself. I think she took on a lot of uh, Brooke's clients, and her <coughs> workload jumped. So she's brought on an assistant full-time, and she's looking for an office space. So she's juggling a lot, and uh, we have a very good rapport. We're building um, the patterns, the monthly pattern. Uh, this month, we um, didn't get the financials till Monday this week. Um, that was yesterday. <laughs> and, uh, and it was just because I forgot to flag it for her because I'm so used to ads up sending them to me and I park it somewhere and then I went looking for it and it wasn't there and I realized why. Um, and she started doing the financials uh, differently. I, it's the same QuickBooks format, but she's um, laid it out a little different. And uh, I, think it'll, I think it's gonna work out great with her. Um, she has a proposition. We've been talking about the radio expenses and there might be a different way to fold them into the regular layout of the, of the, uh, the financials. So I'm also, um, I'm pretty sure that we have uh, assigned expenses to the wrong number <clears throat> as we begin to learn how the, the radio functions. So we'll be doing a review process next month which will fold into the um, projected budget work and we should have the whole new setup uh, set up for the fiscal year that starts in July. And um, Now is Steph Stephanie still, uh, is she handling payroll also? Yeah, she's doing payroll. How's that? Payroll's doing well, except there's um, something in the transition with Intuit. We've stopped getting our uh, um, alert. We would get a, an email every time Intuit got the money and sent it to the bank. It would take a day or two or three to get for the bank to actually post it. But whenever Intuit made the deposit, they would alert us. And that hasn't happened. So there might be a <clears throat> either Intuit is derelict or there's a an update she has to do. So she's looking into that. Um, and she says she'll be doing the, um, send, she'll be sending out the financials. She's gonna aim at sending them out on the second Friday of the month. Now, my question was, does the board wanna get them right away? Or would you rather get your full board packet all at once the week before? Um, I think we better get them right away if you have them, just so that we have time to Review. Yeah, okay. With ads up, they would come sometimes the first week, the second week, the third week, but always by Friday. I always want to give you the weekend to review. So okay. we'll, we'll, live, we'll, let, we'll live with that deadline and we'll aim for the second Friday of the, of the month. And uh, all the check signing cards are up to date. The next step would probably be to uh, get online banking although that's essentially a savings account, so there's not much traffic on it. Then that's it for the financial review or report. Okay. Back to my secretarial duties. <laughs> not exactly. You're for the next item. Oh, <clears throat> okay. What is the next um, item? Oh. Any questions about the finance before we move on? Um, I'm just reverting back to a conversation you and I had last week about uh, money being spent on the radio and how much it's costing and all that. Is there, uh, since we're getting the antenna installed this tomorrow, week, tomorrow, yeah. Tomorrow. Thursday, yeah. Thursday. Thursday. Friday. Thursday, Friday, Tuesday. Yeah. Are there going to be more expenses after that? Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a lot of front-end expenses buying the equipment. Um, right. Once we get all the equipment, uh, we've got the studio pretty well set up. Um, then there will be monthly expenses that go with keeping the streaming uh, video, I mean streaming audio on the radio, on the internet, 
and um, we don't know all those costs yet. Um, we are opening up an account with Sonic to get the signal to the campus. That's new. Um, if you look at the, the financial, um, I've always tried to keep the fundraiser separate, and that got a little squirrely. You can see I budgeted three hundred and forty-eight dollars for fundraising services, and then we started using that budget line for everything, and it came out to two thousand five hundred. So I've got to figure out how this works, but um, our operational expenses. Um, maybe four yeah, thousand. The, the point I was moving towards was that in our financial, you and I had this talk about the financial policy state that you have uh, the ability to spend money up to a five thousand dollar purchase, and we gave John permission to do what he had to do to make purchases for the radio. But I think as fiduciaries, we should at least be able to see what it is that we spent to get this this radio station up and running, an accounting. That's in the budget performance. Okay. Those, those costs. You can see that um, uh, I, in my, when I made my initial that's kind of what's note. tough about this new um, format is I feel like it almost has to be pulled out. And I I guess perhaps I need to re-review the bylaws, but I'm not super uh, familiar with the actual financial procurement policies. Like if something's over a certain amount, then you have to get a certain amount of bids. It's 5,000. To yeah. get approval. Well, wait, wait, where? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, that, what, what Cindy just said goes for everything. Whenever I spend more than 5000 I get board approval. And what is there any procurement policy for if a project costs over a certain amount, you have to get a certain amount of bids or? I don't believe that no. language is in there. Okay. But to get back to what I was saying, if you look um, at the radio expenses 920, I had budgeted 20000 for expenses and we've only spent fourteen so far. Um, that doesn't count capital expenses, the hard equipment that depreciates. But then you can also look at line um, Yeah, I, I'm, line I'm looking, four. yeah, I was kind of looking for more of a, a more explicit outline. Like what, where does an, the antenna comes out of where? Well, the antenna would be in line 213. 213? And, yes, it's a fixed asset, it's on the first page. And See, that's what I'm saying is that you can't just, unless you know where that stuff goes, and I don't, I don't know I'm, where I'm you're still, putting it. I'm still learning where the best yeah. place to put it is. So. Excuse me. Yeah, I, we don't have any project ideas, do we? Yeah. I, I, what I'm saying is I'd like to see something that says what we bought, you know, like an inventory with pricing. It just, is Rob keeping track of that? Well, we did an initial budget for the equipment. But uh, it's yeah. not under radio expenses, so that's what's confusing. I know, and that's what I'm saying is I can't look at that and know how much money you've spent to get that radio station up and running. And if Tim, my next door neighbor, oh, says you, to me, oh, you're on the PCA board, how much exactly did that radio station cost? Oh, you, you I don't can, know. You can see the total amount. You can't just see what it's itemized for. Oh, I would never do that. 14,114, no, right? But you understand what I'm saying. I totally understand because what you're saying, so there's this 920 radio expenses. Yes. But then you're saying that the antenna is under two something, right. which is under, under fixed, fixed assets. assets. Because that and so you, that Which is totally fine, but you, but, but what I'm right. saying, what she, what we were both saying, I think, is that there's no expense report for just the radio okay. in a cohesive You're requesting manner. requesting an expense report, yes. which is not the financials. It would never be the fact I, think the they're, they're I know, but I'm just saying... You would like to get an expense report. That's, that, that, that's what I was saying, but expense. I didn't yeah. use the term expense report, but I'd like to yeah, see an it. itemized list of... Yeah, is what I was saying. I mean, I... I'm not going to uh, drop that on Rob right now until he gets the antenna out. But yes, no, he no, did, no, no, he, no. Like he, next board meeting. Yeah, he did an estimated budget for the the full thing. Right. And it was, well, I can say I'm going to spend thirty thousand dollars on a car, but in the end, I might spend fifty. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I probably will. Yeah, and right. <laughs> Not on a fusion. No, no. And then if I really blow it, I'll get the Tesla. No, I got it. <laughs> so then, you, then you'd be lucky to spend fifty. Yeah. So. Well, well next month would be a good. Five. Next month would be yeah. a good time to do that. Is there a um, budget for maintenance on the antenna? <coughs> Ongoing expenses. We would, if we had to call somebody in, that would be called outside services radio. Mm -hmm. And if it's uh, um, repair of equipment, we have a budget line for that. Yes. I'm also kind of thinking in terms of having an expense report and knowing what our ongoing um, expenses are going to be it makes it easier to go to uh, donors. 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 Sponsors. Yeah, go to sponsors and say, you know. We're really doing great work, but see, it, it doesn't come without you know a cost. And this is your hometown radio. Give us some money. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think this this is I think this is further down on the agenda, but yeah, I really want to know how to understand how to go after underwriting and stuff. Because like, if someone that's building radio content, I want to. I this is something that's I'm good at going after funding, but I'm it's very foreign to me to be like underwrite my show, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. You, you need to tell them this is what it's costing so far and this is our goal. And this is, yeah, and this is the value of this particular show that you should be underwriting. I think that all that has to be considered. Yeah. And I'm happy to do that. <laughs> so I just okay. oh, That yeah. sounds like something more for the radio, uh, for the operations. Yeah. Radio operations uh, committee. And we can, yeah, we can yeah. touch base. The radio okay. operations committee. That's I don't know what you're calling. <laughs> that. That. I don't know what you're calling the group that Chris, you know, has. Well, that's just a pool of uh, stakeholders, producers, people yeah. who are interested. But I think yeah. I think this is something that could be developed in the financial committee and also in the executive committee. We did punt the uh, fundraising marketing campaign, which was one of our goals in the last retreat, was going to be started in the executive committee. Yeah, but, uh, okay, so maybe I misunderstood. I heard underwriting producers shows. Well, that's... Um, Is that what you said? Well, I think they're, they go in that's tangent, right. but yeah, having the tools to af like go yeah. after people to give well, actually, money. Actually, they don't go in tangent. We don't get involved in a producer going out to get money for their And show. that's what I was saying, is that goes more for the stakeholders. The, the, the producer would do that on their own. Yeah, and, and the stakeholders could figure out how to do that. Times and, uh, and then I don't even think they're my crew. But that money goes back to PCA, doesn't it? No, if you call it uh, underwriting a program, no. The programs are yours. All we do is provide the venue, the production right. facilities to okay. make the show. We can talk about it. Yeah, yeah. We, can, we can talk about it. Yeah. I would just assume it would no, this is something yet. that we uh, we lived with with television because we had lots of productions and mm -hmm. some people would have um, a smorgasbord for their crew and they got they got sponsors to help pay for it. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. We'll talk about that. Okay. Anything else for the treasurer's report, John? Does everybody feel <clears throat> comfortable? Not for me. All right. Thank you for that. Um, so do you want to move right into your ED report? That's a sure, director. let's go into the ED report. So the t-shirts have arrived. Uh, I've got about 75 of them. I'm keeping them under wraps because I want them to really splash on uh, parade day. And it's butter yellow. <laughs> the, the color turned out quite nice. Yeah. I only had one order of the 25 or 27 for a ladies' crew. Um, so this is it. But I, the others I got all V, just to make it easier for us to sell them. Ladies get Vs, men get crew. Or ladies can wear a men's crew. So those are not done. We should have about 50 to sell, which will make back our costs. Not a lot of profit, but we can make back our costs if we charge like $25 a shirt. Maybe 35 for an extra large, 3x large. But uh, they're done. And the next thing we would be going after developing would be business cards and window decals for the front of the station. Um, we're working on the cards this week. Uh, and it's a little tricky because do we make sets of PCA cards and KPCA cards, or do we put both logos on the same card? Uh, we're doing a bunch of different versions to see what looks good. But we want to have cards for the parade. At I, least if we print them up ourselves and cut them ourselves, we'll have cards for the parade. I, I don't want to, um, it's just the, 
I don't want to take away from the fact that PCA is who created KPCA. So any effort to put those things together, because like as soon as you water things down and start to like spread them out, it makes it difficult. So PCA is the parent of KPCA. So mm -hmm. I just don't want to see that branding be lost because now there's a radio, like it's a, it's a, program of PCA. KPCA is a program of PCA. So you want to keep them together? I do. I mean, and maybe both brands are on there, but mm -hmm. like, I just, I don't want to see KPCA go off on this tangent um, because it's really just a project of PCA. Yeah. There you go, right from our marketing expert. <laughs> Do what she says. I agree. Oh, good. Me three. The, the identity of PCA is, and it is um, the brand. Well, it's also legal. I mean, yeah. PCA has the license from the FCC to, to create PCA. PCA yeah. so. Plus, I think we have some balance. You have two logos, same colors. On the other side, yeah. Oh, we've developed some we developed new a new PCA logo to, to correspond. Mm -hmm. So, so that's that. Where's my notes here for this? Um, we are doing the internet access with the upstairs neighbor that worked out. Um, Good. Jeff was able to create a partition section on our router mm -hmm. um, with Q QoS and a firewall and gave it a, li a, a limited number of, of bandwidth. That's what QoS does. That's what QoS does. Okay, so now your buzzer compatible. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we got a prorated check for fifty dollars. He's paying seventy-five dollars a month, um, which would be nine hundred a year. And uh, it seems to be a happy s uh, setup. And I'm working now. I was trying to think whether I needed a specific income line, but Stephanie recommended just call it an offset to our outgoing expenses. Negative on, cost. It's a negative cost mm -hmm. on the. Uh, that it avoids us going into the business of providing internet service. Is there a little office space upstairs for the uh, bookkeeper? She looked at our building and the problem was she had a thermostat for a collection of offices in her office and she didn't like that. So she went outside. Yeah, I know why. Yeah. But uh, we do have a new neighbor upstairs and uh, no neighbor in the back yet. Um, community and media of uh, Zen Destiny is going to be filming the Community Awards. That's the Chamber's big event at uh, Sheraton. Cindy and I have done it. Yeah, I saw the t shirt out for him. Yeah. And um, there is an office available in my office building, by the way, if you want to tell her. Oh, okay. <laughs> I won't we'll put that in the 24 middle. Western. I'll oh, put it off the record. Yeah, but it's, it's <laughs> right. It's right you. downtown. No, but it's like yeah. right downtown. So, yeah. It's a cool spot. So. Yeah, I drove out to the Washington House today. <laughs> 24 Western is all oh, available. Yeah. And that, there's something I didn't have on my list of, of uh, items to talk about, but I wanted to give you all one, pass those along. Uh, we got a letter back from Huff, Jared Huffman thanking us for all our services. Oh, cool. Mentioned you if I <laughs> Very nice. Um, it's on buff paper. It's smaller than this. This is a scanned version blown up. It's got a micro logo too. Yeah. We're gonna frame it and incorporate it in any uh, graphical. I did talk to the aides after and everything, and everyone was really pleased. Yeah, that was a very happy solution. I've always tried to to serve their needs. I've done camera at some of these town hall meetings over at the mm -hmm. senior center. A couple of times. So I had a relationship, they knew who to call. I passed them on to Rob and Dennis was already testing the <laughs> the, the setup. I'm trying to get them on my show, so. <laughs> uh, the radio project status, the antenna is the main priority. Uh, Rob is going crazy right now because, you know, he's dealing with uh, contractors and uh, uh, university bureaucracy and <laughs> Crimping tools. He's gonna go. He's gotta buy a crimping tool tomorrow, and he's nervous because you know getting it up there is the first step, then dialing it in. Uh, but it should be up and running this weekend. Is this going to be a, a actual physical object? Yes. Tower or oh, we did a we, yeah, we did metal a metal stick. We did an architectural rendering so they could see what it looked like. Uh -huh. And uh, <coughs> it's in the office right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what building is it going to wind up being on? It's 
leaning up against the sofa. The back building, I guess, would that be C? Building C? Not the maintenance, right? It's the. Uh, no, it's not the maintenance. So it's the uh, physical education building? It's the building where. No, I. No. Or the Albert Hall where the technology is? Do you remember that? Yeah, if you're from the coming into the JC, it would be on the. That building all the way on the edge near the, the, the that road that leads to the back parking lot. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. the last building facing so the parking lot. So where the lot. canteen is? No, the canteen is in a building. You walk past it to get to this building. Okay. You've got if you've it's got building the, C. Okay, I'm gonna have to yeah. look for building C. If, if I'll, so I'll I'll get back to you. On that, okay. it, it's not up yet, right? No. It's it the end, actual physical no, antenna no. is not up yet. No. But against the sofa with all the office. roadblocks, do we still think that it's going to Oh, no, get the, the whole plan was to set a day, and the day was set for last Friday, uh -huh. but um, the contractor backed off on it because he said, if I don't get it finished in one day, I don't, I don't want all my stuff laying around for the weekend. Uh -huh. He's got to get a, a lift. Uh -huh. um, a man lift. Yeah. yeah, because those are fragile tiles. You can't really step on the tiles without being hooked to something. So they're going to have a forklift, not a forklift, <laughs> Uh, scissor, cherry, scissor, cherry picker, cherry picker, picker. Cherry picker thank uh -huh. you. and they'll be going up Thursday to do that. What's been happening now is we've been running the cable, and uh, we just decided to run to go with Sonic to get um, uh -huh. the uh, signal to the the point of entry to the campus, and then cable will run it through their DSL lines, which theoretically exist. I'm not sure how that turned out, but he said it went. Everything went through. So yeah, it went through. So they got into the building, and then in the building they went into the electrical unit with backup power ran new cabling for electricity mm -hmm. and telephone up to the transmitter which should uh, which arrived today <laughs> I saw the box <laughs> so there's still a lot of little things that need to be worked out oh yeah and then once getting it up smoothly they'll be tweaking bigger. it and uh, setting the dials is somebody from PCA watching them oh yeah he's there'll be somebody on site when yeah. that all that works oh, being yeah. done that'd be Rob right that'd yeah. be Rob okay and maybe Jeff <clears throat> just been involved in the, the sonic part great and all three of us went over last week to, to walk it out with all the players and, and Fridays are really good because they don't have classes past noon yeah okay so they got all day Thursday to do it and if the weather stays like this it should be straightforward and then there's a question of painting it so it matches the building we did we, some, don't, we did some of that so yeah. not all of it but you know there's a lot of uh, balls in the air and Rob's juggling so. okay that's the big news. Uh, we created a Facebook page for the radio uh, community, uh, and we and we bounced ideas around until uh, Chris came up with the, the perfect name for it: Free Range Radio. So that's what we're running <laughs> with. <laughs> and uh, and that's it, up now. It's up now. It's not an open page. It's a closed page, which is better because then you can post on it. We don't have to really vet it. We don't have people spamming. Then? It's a group? It's a closed group. You uh, can get invited or you can uh, ask, a, you, can, you join. And uh, the administrator approves, you're a member, then you can post there. And uh, We're hoping it'll be a real exchange of uh, communication between producers, or we call them programmers. Gotta be careful of your vocabulary. In radio, they're programmers. Oh, okay. TV, they're producers. Don't tell the software guy. <coughs> yeah, right. Huh? Uh, programming is proceeding. We've kind of put a hold on it this these two weeks while Rob concentrated on the antenna. Um, we've got four or five shows that are pretty regular, and mm -hmm. another two or three that are have tried out, and a couple of people who are just training offline. And Rob's still doing his podcast trainings, and they're very popular. Have more people. Uh, Dennis, I'm sorry. Um, Actually, I kind of blew it today. I had a, a, a student that I didn't know that I forgot uh, about, so. Sorry about that. <laughs> How many total slots are going to be available eventually when we um, really get going? I don't really know um, because there's a um, we don't have the airtime twenty four seven. Right. Okay. So there will be certain times when we won't be on the air. Now I don't know how that's going to work out, and I'm constantly on the verge of writing them to see where they're at, but I don't really want to reignite this subject with them because if they don't get it done by November, they've lost their, their window of, to build. Um, and, and they are who? Sonoma and Napa. Oh, so are they live then? Or are they just well, they, all trying to figure it out? Uh, 
we all have the same bandwidth, 103.3. Frequency, yeah. Frequency, and um, I have heard through our uh, consultant, Clay, who helped all three of us get the license, uh -huh. uh, that Napa is moving forward. I haven't heard anything from Sonoma, and the guy who was developing the Sonoma radio is a professional radio person. He's got a commercial radio station he runs. So he knows what to do, and if he hasn't done it, there must there might be a problem. Uh, he would be the, the linchpin, because I don't think if Napa were broadcasting a PC, KPCA was broadcasting at the same time, they wouldn't overlap. There's too much distance. Right. Sonoma's the only one we have to worry about. So that's something I'm watching carefully. Even though we're blocked by Sonoma Mountain. Yeah, even there. But the FCC, they don't even, they, they just look at a map and they just measure. They don't look at topography. <laughs> you know, we could if we could get we're their like attention that. and get enough, get somebody to look into our... Where are they physically located? The Sonoma? Yeah. It's on um, square, isn't it? No, they're down, they're actually south of town on the hills closer to us. Mm. Now let's say When you say the hills, you're talking about Sonoma Mountain, North Sonoma, Sonoma Mountain. Yeah. Okay. Let's say Sonoma does move forward, and so then we all have to divvy up, put in thirds, our time. <coughs> mm -hmm. Let's say Sonoma doesn't have enough content to fill all of that time. Can they <coughs> cede it to us? They could, and that's one of the things that would be open. I mean, I, what I, what I, to, to start to answer the first question, mm -hmm. uh, we will be constrained with 24-7 scheduling, so that would limit the amount of slots we have. But we're not constrained on, on the internet. We can go 24-7 on the internet. So there will be a privileging of live shows that need our studio to go live on the radio. There'll be other shows that don't need that, that can go on the internet only. Um, I don't know how it's gonna shake out. Um, sometimes when you're doing music, two hours is very quick, very short. Uh -huh. um, but maybe we'll have to get to the point where we say one hour slots if we have a lot of people coming in. I would say a better option rather than limiting it to one hour would be to do A and B weeks. Meaning uh, every, everybody gets their two hour spot but every other week. Yeah, that's I another option. I think that option. would be better. Just yeah. but not, and not everyone's going to want a two hour slot though. Well, that's, I, when I, they I talk mean, about talk, it's like an hour maximum. Yeah. Yeah. But even then, but no, that, that's a very good solution. Uh, some somebody might want to do a monthly show, yeah. not a weekly show. So yeah. some well, somebody's going to. Now we're kind of getting into operations, yeah, which is in our business operations. here. Sure. But that is, you know, the website uh, will have a schedule that will show that we don't have that now, and it, it all hinges on the scheduling automation, which is a, a software that will actually program so that we're all home asleep and then the show for three a.m. in the morning kicks in. We have to build that, and we're not, we haven't got that far yet. It's all on the drawing board. Do we have a way of tracking how many people are listening on the internet? <clears throat> yes, we do, online. We won't have that on the radio. Uh -huh. But online, we had about 30 people listening to the Um Otherwise, it's two or three people. I don't know, I could, did Rob, did you look into how many people were listening when you did your show? Um, yeah, I mean, I had like a total of 250 views on Facebook. Yeah. Well, that's after the fact. I'm sorry, but when it's actually live, we well, can, we can track that. Well, I can track. The only thing I can track is the total views, and then, like, how people were viewing. So I can see that side of it, which is kind of yeah. why that's a nice integration. But. So you're putting you're putting the, the audio file on online, Facebook Live. Or? Well, I did the Facebook Live, and the, we had problems with recording the audio file so actually it wasn't there but that's again that was a whole <laughs> in the future yes I would like to put it <laughs> online but we had issues with the recording of the audio file so there is a set limit to how many people can listen to our online do you know how many I don't know I don't have that number but it, it's, it's healthy we don't think we'll have a problem and that tracking is built into yes uh, some sort of at a certain point program. we would have to spend more money to have more people listening because they have a server that gets hits for the people listening, and they can count the people who are listening at a given uh -huh. time. And if you've ever watched a live uh, Facebook video, you can see people coming and going. Mm -hmm. So the number changes as the, the show goes on. That's all built into the technology. So that's my director's report for uh, April 18th. Um, you missed, um, or I, I was asleep 
for the butter and egg coverage? Is, is there something you want well, to talk about? Just that that's on our agenda. As oh, okay. We, I we thought there was something time. specific that you. No, wanted. I just I try okay. to keep track of what we do in the community. Um, that's okay. An annual thing. I could say that we're not going to do a live to tape switch. The technology is still too heavy for us, but that means we put up three cameras and we do the edit. On the video side. Okay, thank you. Sure. We have no items on the consent calendar, so uh, under reports of committees, did, did finance meet? I know you <coughs> have been. No. No. Okay. Uh, and I think nobody else has either. So we'll move to old business if we're okay with that. Mm -hmm. Item 10, uh, A, ish. Discussion and possible action on the butter and egg parade meetings and planning. Um, do you or Richard want to speak to that? It's going to be a great flow. <laughs> I want to hear. I actually want to hear about it. Well, we've, uh, we've got some great banners that are going to be skirts around the uh, the truck, and uh, Dennis put together a terrific uh, mini studio that's going to be on the back. We'll have a whole bunch of hay bales for people to sit on. And I think we're accumulating people to, to sit on those hay bales, right? Mm -hmm. well, we have to do that. I got the orders today. No chairs. You can't have chairs on the back of the truck. You right, so we're hay, hay bales, right? Right. Yeah. And, and I've arranged for that. And what's the plan for the actual radio feed? Just music, or? I think it's going to be... Uh, we, put out a, we put out an email requesting mm -hmm. requests, people, songs that people want to hear. So we'll shout them out, um, and then... It will be a mix of banter, hopefully witty, and uh, <laughs> and music. Well, That's the plan. I mean, I'm just going to basically just do my show okay. from the float and promote the radio station. And it'll be pre-recorded, right? No, it'll be live. But you'll be playing with the stuff that people have requested. It's not that they're calling into the table that's on the <clears throat> no, truck. They, I didn't get in. I didn't light the fire quick enough to get people to actually phone into my voicemail line and have mm -hmm. some audio. I mean, if we could still do that if you guys want to give me a couple of plants. We could, people call my voice line and have an audio, you know, say what they want and then I can download those songs and, or those recordings and play them before I play the song so that we can have a little more community interaction, but I just, I've been a little busy lately. And so, so, is the is, so is the float going to be playing the music yeah, we have a PA. externally and internally? Yeah, we have okay. a PA system and then an internet link to stream. And Rob is going to be at the studio and he's going to be receiving the stream and streaming it onto the radio. So could we potentially take requests from the audience on the ground? Like I said, the requests will be pre-arranged. Right, ground. because it has to be it has to be all... I have to actually have the songs. The too. Set list has like, to this be... is an email from blah, blah, blah. Here is your... Mm -hmm. Yes, again. Yeah, the set list is going to be on his laptop. Okay. Yeah. Well, actually... So, 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 somebody, yeah, so, so it's a, you're reading the email instead of saying, somebody calling and saying, I'd love to hear Led Zeppelin, you know. Yes. Well, I'm trying to figure out how those of us that are on the ground or on the float can interact with the audience. No. Most we put the we put the kibosh on that because the live wireless microphones a I've never met one that is reliable <laughs> and b it's if there's just no way because the float will be moving by and it's it's really I don't know I've marched in the parade and handed stuff out and it's way easy to get way behind it so it's just better if we have the community send us their stuff and we'll say their names and give them a big shout out but. I don't think the idea of actually having live interaction with the, the float watch or the parade watchers is the best idea. Next year. <laughs> I well, people should call in next, by next year. Yeah. <laughs> I had a request from, or not a request, but <clears throat> I was talking to Marie about our parade location, and uh, <clears throat> it's quite possible she could call it. I mean, she could do a pre recorded. Uh, Request. Yeah, and like I said, would, I mean, she would love to have submit something that we could read out about the parade. Absolutely, I'll read whatever anybody wants me to read as long, you know. So, but I think we could also get her to, to record this, something. This is going to be the top ornament piece on the top of the. the it's truck. coming along really nicely. Yes. Yeah. It's out in the truck if you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Richard is our. It's a good and plenty, right? Artist. <laughs> It's in the back of my car right now. I'm going to put it 
primer it. It almost looks well, and I guess I think it would be nice during the parade to be able to introduce anyone that actually does have active radio or TV shows to like yeah, oh, have absolutely. them be like, hey, be... this is someone that. No, Paul's going to be up there and we can play some of his playlists. Sure. Um, I've got playlists now. Yeah. Um, uh, Jay's going to be up there. Yep. I mean, I'm going to be, sh I have the schedule, so I'll be, and I do that on my show anyway, to talk about the other shows that are playing. So. I'll be there. Just let me know. You want me to know. How many, people, <laughs> yeah, how many, yeah, yeah, yeah. How many people do we have now who are actually going to be sitting on the float? Can we count them? A lot. A and lot. now that I have okay. the order, the I can let things. David know. I think cool. we're going to be behind far enough so that he can make a complete circle oh, good. around uh, and then jump off at Walnut Park and then jump on the truck if he wants to. We, we need, to, we, we need a ladder to get yeah. the entrance. I've got a step ladder that I've already identified at home that yeah. will. So we have, so we have ten people. We have ten people sit on the back of the truck. On the hay bales, yeah. Like ten or twelve. I'm very sure. I'm pretty sure. Get it out there in the next week. John and I can put it together quickly. Okay. It's just you know. Yeah. Let's let's have a great show. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank John and I were talking that we think that we may have too many people, but that's good. Okay. That's good. Are, are, we, uh, did, are we going to have people walking behind? Are you going to be on yeah. the truck? We need people I don't care. I, 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 I'm, I'm be fine to walk behind the truck and give Paul, out Paul's stickers or whatever. Anywhere you want them. Uh, Lee Lusted has offered to help. Um, yeah, my dad said he would do it. Yeah. Just I, so that gives us how many people walking? I don't know. I mean, Five? I have, I, have, I have not watched the numbers float, but we've got, I would say, uh, 20 really very um, energetic uh, pro programmers interested in the radio. We give them a call. We could pull in from our pool a lot of people. Uh, I think it's going to be a big splash, especially Great. if we have people out in the audience with little FM radios <laughs> right there. That would be, I mean, it that's, would be like a good solid 15 because seconds away, but... That's okay. Oh. And then the plan is that we will um, end at Walnut Park and uh, Petaluma Boulevard and proceed on down to I Street, which is where the turnaround point is. You, all the other streets will be closed. I will be the first place and we'll go down to I and come back up to the Petaluma Mail Depot where they have a big party every year and um, Gator Nation is playing uh, there and we we're going to broadcast a uh, live show. I want to mention something that uh, Cindy has done, which I think is just incredible, to make the uh, the float pop. Uh, oh. She put together just a great uh, on air sign and found uh, lights that flash on on the inside. <laughs> so as we go down the street, we're going to have these uh, on air signs they're about i don't know six feet up in the air on either side of the table flashing so it should give it yeah. something extra yeah yeah great. it's a fun toy she did fun good. toy to make <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's um, a new era for pca well like i said whatever you really need from me <coughs> um you two need these directions um and I made a set for you, John. Uh, if you want one, Dominic, I got an extra one. Sure. Because it, it, it's very specific about how they want us to do things. And number one, you, you're not going to be able to drive your cars anywhere near downtown. So you're going to have to park in the parking garage by the fire station and walk up to 4th and G. Or by City Hall, that's where I found 4th and F, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. You're just not going to be able to park anywhere near downtown. Yeah, if you get there early enough, there's lots of parking up by City Hall. Yeah, that's what yeah. Dominica just what said. About, okay. yeah. but, but not later. And that's... Once the parade starts, well, yeah. 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 But they actually have you call at 9.30 and the parade is going to start. Um, we have to be there. The, the truck has to be there at 9.30. It's okay. asking that participants on or around your float don't arrive until 10.30 because there's a lot of cars moving in and out of there. It's very, very busy street. So, um, of course, Richard and Dennis will be there at 930 because we'll still we'll have to put it back together. Mm -hmm. We'll have to disassemble, you know, the table and 
and of course the equipment. Yeah, we're not going to. I'm not going to. We're not going to drive down Petaluma Boulevard <laughs> on, on Saturday morning at 45 miles an hour with your PA system on this. We 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 should drive down with the microphone. <laughs> put out the caveat too that barring weather, if it gets if it's raining, yeah, we are. The extended forecast says it's not supposed to, but it has changed so many times this week. So let's just, let's not think, think that far ahead. We're, we we got to do it. So. What else on the parade? Anything? No. The microphone will be waterproof. <laughs> well, I thought we were putting a tent up. No? That's a, a that's an idea. I don't know if we we can do that if it's drizzling, but if it's a downpour, there's yeah. no way we're gonna electrocute ourselves. Yeah, with a lot of high <laughs> voltage equipment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not good. Power, <laughs> power, yeah. Not good. <laughs> California, don't fail us, please. Not okay, shall we move on to 10B uh, discussion? Possible action on a PCA advocacy policy well this is kind of a placeholder because it was brought up at the last meeting of the table so it was by definition uh, old business but we've created a new business item which takes it a step farther and I think we could move into the discussion at that point essentially um, we've had a couple of we have one interesting request to participate or to post in our window a3 Patriot zone. And I generally in the past have just, this isn't our business, we're a non-partisan non uh, resource. But I thought this was interesting, it would be good to know whether we have a policy to accept such things. Um, so I brought it to the board last month and uh, sent out the related information. They don't have a website, they have a Facebook page. and. Um, there was an article in the paper. Um, and you all know what it's about. <laughs> there's been a lot of community uh, engagement. In fact, there's a major event here on May 7th, Community Engagement Fair. Uh, I think it's, it's great. It's, it's stimulating the community, getting people to work together. It's our constituency, in a sense. And um, I've also done some research, and it's time to take a stand, say, uh, you're, you're against hate. <laughs> not that hard. It's but, pretty, pretty easy but, stand. Okay. But I just didn't want to, it's not a, um, it's a policy decision. And so Tim has already started working on a policy that would we could insert into the, uh, into our policies document, and that is the new business A item. Um, and I also think it's related to the um, new business B, which is to Re, uh, reactivate our committee meetings so that a lot of this could be developed so that the policies and procedures committee could actually come to the board with a written policy and all you'd have to do is approve it. But there is an existing policy now in the bylaws or something like that. For what? For advocacy. No? No. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Huh? Okay. Somehow, no, totally I, I, somehow I understood that, that there was something that was directing you to make decisions on a no, it, should be, it should be silent on that. The but there's nothing that gives me the permission. There might be restrictions on, uh, well, there's restrictions on calls to action and advertising, uh, taking a position. But it's also just been strategically frowned on to take a, posi a political position in a town where you could have, uh, the other side might be, might boycott you or stop coming. Mm -hmm. or, we're a resource to the open community. Um, it's not our place to uh, put up a candidate sign. Okay, so that's not in writing any place. That's just sort of a general understanding. Well, nonprofits can't, in general, non make can't. a political right. stance and against We have doors. very stringent rules on campaigns. You know, mm -hmm. equal time for all, and we don't pick a side. And uh, we have always watched our Facebook page for that, that kind of stuff. But there, there, you know, this is another another level that I thought would be interesting to talk and to, to open up the whole question. We have new board members who have to. Well, you have the board binder, correct? The bylaws? No. No. Do you have a binder, a blue binder? No. I don't have oh, a blue binder. We we've got them at the office. 
Okay, so the bylaws are in here, the okay. existing policies. So I should come by and pick one yeah, up. Yeah, come okay. by and pick one up. Uh, we I also do not have one of those. Yeah, I got kept this made. Um, we have a we had a policies and procedures document, um, and then we went in and reviewed it in uh, two thousand and eight or nine, nine, two thousand and nine and ten, and the board we did a marvelous job with the policies. We never got to the procedures because that goes to the staff, and the procedures were constantly changing, and the staff turnover. I was never able to really pull it out. Um, we we're working on one for the radio now, and that that work will filter back to. But we have a very um, well uh, well designed uh, policy. So we have general overall policy yeah, for general overall the organization. Policy. And that is the distinction that caused the minutes to be changed at the last minute. The policies is the board's domain, procedures is uh, staff. staff yeah. We execute the policies, um, and we can be judged on whether we did a good or, job, good or bad job on that. But the board doesn't generally get involved in the procedural, procedural operations. Yeah. Operations. So my suggestion is we bounce this subject into new business. Bounce it to where? Into new business A. Okay. Is that the same kind of conversation? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So there's no action on 10B, and we don't need to address that anymore. So we can move to new business 11A discussion of possible action on, on establishment of board policy. To guide staff on matters of support for nonprofit or non-business causes, was that was that mean? Was that your <laughs> request for? Well, thank you for that segue item. there, John. Yes, <laughs> take it away. So, following last you believe well, uh, last month's discussion on uh, the specific example of this anti-hate uh, display of support, uh, I. Thought well, after a couple of days, I thought uh, that it might be a good idea to articulate a policy on what kinds of uh, outside causes, efforts, interests, whatever we would want staff to or not to support. And so I started started drafting it and emailed it to myself back and forth. And I think what we came up with is something of most of a page. And um, I would suggest that we start with at least that and take other comments and uh, send it to the uh, policy and procedure committee. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I would like to, to see it in order to assess, because I think any sort of advocacy role of the agency should be mission-minded and, of course, nonpartisan. And well, we have an opening on the Policies and Procedures Committee. You can't say you didn't see that coming. <laughs> because because that's where we're can going I just review it. that policy? The Policies and Procedures Committee is going to make the recommendation to the whole board. Oh, so, we'll work around your schedule. Well, as the ranking and we're not going to do it until after Butter and Egg Day Parade. We already talked as about As the this. ranking member of that committee, uh, I would be more than happy to receive comments from all board members. So, uh, John, you have that thing that I sent you. You want me to send it again? or um, the, the initial draft? Yeah, you should send the initial draft. I've got yes. a copy here, and I just made one copy, pass it around if you want to glimpse that. But well, I'd like to review it if you're course. willing to send yeah. it well, out. That's what I was saying, I, I, is that we were going to make the recommendation, and the board is going to review the <laughs> recommendation. You're, what do you mean, we? You're not on that committee. Yes, I am, on policies and procedures. Well, who took me off? Are you Williamson, yeah, yeah. Jaramillo, or Strobeck? I was on that committee. Who took me off? You. Put her back you're on. on three committees already, so maybe that... So Domenica wants to fight you for that remaining spot. Well, no, she could be on it too, but... Um, you could put two more people in there. I didn't even notice my name wasn't there. I was did the policies with you last time. I wanted... That's my favorite committee. I know, it is kind of fun. Uh, we'll get to argue. I have the notes of when we discussed where we rearranged things with the new... Group. Yeah, I must have... It's just was something yeah. that I overlooked if I didn't say... I, I, yeah. Well, let me say I'm happy to review anything sent to me, but I cannot commit to more than three committees. Yeah, and the finance committee is going to be... I think I remember the conversation now. I think I had to go off that to go to 
Outreach and Development to yeah, be on the Butter and Egg Day subcommittee. We didn't sneak you off, but uh, you were already on three. Oh, you're right. Well, take me off the nominating committee then. Is, is no. that on the agenda? No, we, we can't make any changes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can't make any changes tonight, <laughs> but yeah, that. All right, so that needs to go on the next agenda yeah. is to uh, reassess the uh, committee. Committee appointments, um, structure. assignments. Yeah, in the, in the meantime, I think that we'll, the uh, committee will will convene once we uh, get comments from everybody. And I can join your meeting. And if you like, we can have it at your house. Okay. I mean, I don't have any other good places. My dogs will eat people, so. My dogs will lick <laughs> people. Your dogs love people. My dogs will lick people to death. Well, that's a better fate than mine. I guess like we could. <laughs> you can't see the bites. The dogs are too small. No, but... we could meet at my house. That's yeah. fine. So, um, so Tim will circulate the draft to the board, <coughs> then convene a committee meeting to prepare a draft. For Sounds good. Is everybody board. agreeable to that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I'll uh, reach out to Paul and uh, you and uh, what's her name? The hostess. Yes. The hostess with the most. <laughs> and uh, gather comments from the rest. Would, uh, do you think that there is one or more staff people that might be uh, educated on the topic that might be able to offer input? Nelly. Nelly? Nelly? Yeah. Okay. I'll send it to you if you send it out to everybody. Okay. And, and Nelly then, is on our list for <coughs> board documents. She's the liaison okay. for the board, so makes sense. Enough. Okay. Okay. Anything else for 11A? 11B, discussion and possible action on establishment of a schedule for regular board committee meetings. Oh, huh. we almost touched on to that. Uh, yeah. That was close. <laughs> I could have reworded it to make appointments, but <laughs> I think it's enough just to start looking at when. Um, well, you know, because I think the committees are, uh, they save time at these meetings. Can we punt this to next month's meeting Absolutely. so that um, with, with the, with yeah, the so we can do the members. rearranging <clears throat> of the structure table to the next meeting of with the item nine and um, item nine being reports of committees. Um, is that okay with everybody? Okay, and then Paul can be here as well, and hopefully we'll all be here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we will look for a motion to adjourn to closed session. And I will move that. I will second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Okay, anyone opposed? All right, we are closing our meeting right now, and thank you for being here.